Okay, now that we have the basics kind of out of the way, let's talk about compound cells. When we initially set up, I had you turn on this compound cell manager toolbox. So as a series of tools, we have the compound cell manager here. Place compound cell, which uses something similar to the cell dialogs. We have a drop cell, which breaks a compound cell down to its individual components. We have replace compound cell, which allows you to change the one you're using. Mirrors. And then import and place a single Revit family. So within our compound cell library, within CH, we have a number of those available to us. Electrically, we have a series of lights, lights, no bulb, which is the one we use on pretty much any project in North America. We have a metric. We also have a hard metric and soft metric. Hard metric being everything was modeled actually in metric units. It's nice, it's round, it's beautiful. The soft metric is essentially our ANSI ones just translated into metric units. We also have power devices. This is your switches and boxes, that kind of stuff. Power equipment. We also have a telecom and switches. And it's odd that we have a light switch here, but fairly certainly exists in here. Ah, I guess, never mind, I was wrong. They've split these out now. This used to be a combined set. Now we have one that's uh, your gang boxes, essentially your receptacles, and then eight switches. We also have telecom, which is speakers and uh, com ports and all sorts of telephones and wall outlets and whatnot as well. Now let's go ahead and go into power equipment and we're going to go down to our transformers. Power transformer. So let's go ahead and place one of these. Use this guy. Now this looks very similar to the transformer we created here. Let's go ahead and place. This is going to ask us to start with an or origin. Let's use the back of our equipment pad here. So we select our origin. Again, I like to tentative first to make sure it's placing in the right spot. And we set a rotational angle. And we're good. So now we have a compound cell. It's a transformer that looks extremely similar to the one we already created. A little bit more detail. So instead of going through the effort that we did here by using a compound cell, we can redo that cell multiple times over. So let's say we want to create this guy as a compound cell. So our first step we're going to do is lock this 3D elements into a cohesive set. We then need to create an annotative shape for it. So let's create a 2D. We're going to use the same level, this magenta level that exists. So let's create rectangle. We're going to make it slightly bigger than it needs to be for right now because we want to be able to grab a hold of it. And let's go ahead and space this off the top of the transformer Come on. by about six inches. Now we can come in here and come on. Reshape our transformer to the appropriate size. It looks like our reference window shifted slightly. So let's go ahead. It would seem I moved the reference at some point. Did we copy something in? No. Hmm, interesting. Let's put that back into position. There we go. Now it looks no, that's not right either. 
Oh, I think I know what's going on. So at the same time that I'm doing this, somebody is actually in the reference moving and shifting things around. It is a live reference on a live project. So anyway, that's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and shut it off for now. So we have this transformer. We have a 3D group that we created. We have a 2D annotation symbol. Now, when we go into compound cell manager window we have this option to create and this requires a handful of things a 3d symbol a plan symbol a perforator if you're wanting to create a essentially a hidden line set and an origin now before we get into that fully there's something you have to be aware of now this takes into account as you're modeling that or it assumes you are modeling at a right angle to the world origin, which I don't believe we are. So let's go into our view, go into rotate view. We are going to set this back to top. So it assumes we are at right angles, but on occasion we will go in here and that may not necessarily be the case. You want to make sure that you're actually set to a global origin at this angle. Otherwise, when you create your compound cell, it's going to come in at a wonky angle every time. So, to start, we'll select our 3D component. You'll see the OK is now black. We're going to select our plan symbol. It's now black as well. We're not going to create a perforator in this case. We're going to select an origin. Now we want these transformers to space off the wall every time so instead of being down here at the very bottom we're going to use the back of this slab. That way it always spaces off the wall the appropriate amount. And then we'll click create. We'll name this according to our standard so it's a P of R for power, X of R, transformer, and we'll just do XXW by 16 by xx h because I don't know the actual dimensions and this is a floor. I'm going to copy that and we're going to use that in the descriptor as well. We can leave type blank in this case. You know, some people use it to further delineate things out little bit within the compound cells. So now we can click OK and that shows up in our compound cell library. Now if we go in here and select one of these and select edit you'll see our cell libraries are separated out by say in this case it's power. So we can come into the transformer we created. Right now it is set as a type of a graphic and we're going to set this accordingly. OK. And now this has updated our descriptor. Uh, unfortunately, if you're working within our project-wise development, the next time you open up Ecosim, this will no longer be there. This is great for creating uh, compound cells as one-off. It will keep all the definitions so you could pull these forward but it will not be in this compound cell manager next time because of the way everything kind of replicates onto your hard drive. What you could do potentially is create a new library for 
anything that you create. And as long as you save that in a location that's not going to overwrite due to the project-wise environment, it should be available for you next time. If you're not in project-wise, it doesn't really matter. Now let's go ahead and place this transformer that we just created. There is the new compound cell version of our transformer. Delete the one we had, move this guy back in. Now, when we save this back, and we go into our container, and we rerun our extraction that instead of seeing the multiple lines we were seeing previously where we had the exterior of the transformer and we still saw the legs. Now when we cut our extraction you're only going to see this magenta annotated symbol. We use this quite a bit for our lights and other more complex shapes. That way when we're cutting extractions we're not having to cut each of those individual symbols that if we have a highly complex light could take oh, I forgot to hit the shift button so it doesn't cut each of those lights individually it just sees that imitative symbol and says oh we're just going to cut a circle to represent this light instead of cutting each individual light which in some cases where you have 60 70 lights if they're a highly complex model that extraction can take quite a bit of time and isn't necessary in most cases because plans we need and the scales that we use typically are not uh, large enough to be able to make out those individual components. The other change to that is when you do a complex model if we end up at the end of the project going with a different light or something like that and it's showing on the plan in a certain configuration then we have to go back in and update that accordingly. If we're not showing at that level of detail we do not have to worry about it as much. So this is still loading. Come on. Sometime this week. Come on. And of course it would lock up. Um, well, let's go ahead and close it. Yeah, something did not load quite right. So let's go back into our container and we'll bring the launch ecosim. The more complex your models, the harder it is sometimes for ecosim to suss it all out. That's why I like electrical, we typically don't have complex models. So while this is loading in, our next video we are going to go over cable tray and the various ways this can be brought into life. There are two different pieces of software that we typically use. If it's simple, it does not need any smarts to it. It's very simple to place cable tray in Ecosim. Ecosim does have its limitations though. It is highly convoluted on how to place individual vertical sections, um, but it is nice for just quick cable tray loops, whereas uh, BRCM, which is a different Bentley product, Bentley Raceway and Cable Management software, that we can sit there and do more complex systems. It's also uh, better for BIM applications because there's uh, intelligence built into those pieces of uh, cable tray and equipment. 
So let's go back now that this is open. And we will cut our floor plan once again. And over here with the geometry. You can see our annotative shape there about the transformer. And now, instead of seeing the more complex version of that model, we now just get the simple annotative symbol. And there you go. There, that is compound cells.